Well, how many times have we listened to an employee's concern as HR people, and then all of a sudden we put on that hat of, what in heaven are they talking about? Or worse yet, the employee's coming to us with what they consider to be a highly, highly, uh, um, uh, just an urgent matter, something that just, here's our favorite word, they are just so offended by but then again, as an HR person, we're looking at this and going, oh, wait a minute. Is this really as bad as it seems? You're listening to The Human Resource. And my name is Pandy. I want to welcome you to the show today. Yes, we're going to talk about that new term that some of us older uh, HR professionals are trying to get used to. But it's, it's that oversensitivity that is present in our society today. And I know that if you're listening to this show, you have had something come up that you've backed away and said, wait a minute, I don't think this is, I don't think this is exactly as serious as it should be. And, and that's exactly the lens that my guest today is going to help you perfect so that when you walk into these situations as HR representatives and, and HR professionals, you are using the right lens and the right set of optics so that all parties involved in these situations are moving in the right direction to a good solution. I want to bring Scott Warwick into the show. Scott, how I, I, hey. I, I can't introduce you any more than I have already over the last few years because every time yeah. you're on the show, you bring so much to the audience. Oh, thank you. That's great. Well, well, no, today I want to make sure that they understand. We are going to base a lot of this conversation on your most recent book, Healing the Human Brain. I, I just I just keep going back over this and realizing that, that HR people really need to understand, with the, with the topic of mental health so prevalent in our conversations now, and all the other underlying issues of harassment and discrimination and all these, they really need to hear more from you about the whole term of oversensitivity. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you start off with a really good uh, hypothetical sort of example in that it, it seems like no matter what you say today, somebody is going to be offended, okay? And, and so you've got a few different things going on here one is you've got a culture in our country that is saying well if anybody offends you um back i mean that that is a tremendously dangerous type of formula to have because first of all let's look and see what is offensive okay because understand I, I come from the world of employment law and, as well as human resources and i'll tell you we got this great test Actually, 30 years ago this year, back in 1993, it's from Harris, Harris versus Forklift System. And the United States Supreme Court answered the question, well, what is hypersensitive? And understand, hyper means outside the norm. So if you're hypersensitive or overly sensitive, what that means is you are outside the norm. You're way out there all by yourself. Most people don't agree with you. Okay, so... Back in 1993, the test was, okay, would the reasonable person in the community be offended? Which back then could have been Tennessee, okay, Ohio, something like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I think today it's the whole country. I mean, with, with all of the technology we've got. So here's what I always put out in my classes and put in uh, the employers I work with. If that was on the front page of USA Today, would most people be offended by that? And if the answer to that is yes, then you're, then yeah, you got a legitimate beef. If the answer to that is no, then guess what? It's you. It's your pet peeve. 
Now, here's a tip. Don't ever tell a hypersensitive person that they're hypersensitive. It won't go well. Okay, just there's a rule. Rule number okay? one. Rule number one. Rule number one. Yeah. So just give you a great example. I have I get this two or three, four times a year where somebody is very offended and they file a, uh, a harassment charge that someone in the organization used the word black. Okay, that, hey, the proper term is uh, African-American, and it's offensive to be called black because black means evil, devoid of light, and all this kind of stuff. So I sit down, I listen to the person, and I first say, well, if, if that was on the front page of USA Today, that we were using the word black here instead of African-American, what would most people think? And I think the answer to that is most people would say it must be a slow news day. Okay, Everything in Ukraine must have been suffered or something <laughs> like this. There's nothing to talk about. But then I always hear from that person, they'll say, well, yeah, but I'm offended by it. Yeah, but that's not the task. You left the house today. And that means that we're going to, I mean, we'll treat you with respect. If you want to be referred to as African-American, we certainly will. But no, I'm not going to give anybody a written warning. Because this is, and we're not going to change all the literature because, I mean, quite frankly, I can't look at somebody and see that they're African-American or what. I don't know until I get to know them. So that is hypersensitivity as opposed to, let's say, somebody used a serious racial slur against somebody and let your mind just wander. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that was on the front page of USA Today, what would most people think? Like, Sheriff Anthony Campo, up in, great example, up in Sheffield Lake, or former uh, sheriff, he put a Ku Klux Klan note on the back of a black police officer's fire, or, um, uh, raincoat. Okay, so you compare the two examples here. One, oh my gosh, uh, Sheriff Campo, you're done. Your career is over. Oh my gosh, that is so horribly offensive. Whereas you got this other person over here, where anything you say to them, that's hypersensitivity. Now, look at the two comparisons here. Interestingly to note here, uh, what is a healthy brain? Okay, a healthy brain is Betty White. Betty White um, did not go from zero to 60 with her temper. I mean, she got upset, she got angry, but she didn't go from zero to 60 with her temper all the time. Uh, she was not hypersensitive over things. She wasn't paranoid, great sense of humor. That is a healthy, healthy brain. Everything else is brain damage. Everything else is something in the brain has been burned. And I'll tell you right now, that's what healing the human brain is all about. I'm talking to you as a former PTSD person. I'm, I'm a PTSD survivor, and I've got the brain scans to prove it. Yeah. My brain is about 85, 90% clear. It's been cured. But that's because I took care of my brain. And I'll tell you, here's one of the greatest death threats that everybody has to listen to out there. If you work in an environment where you walk on eggshells and you get bullied by somebody who is hypersensitive or you get bullied by someone who is an attacker, like Sheriff uh, Anthony Campo, that is is worse than smoking. Chronic ongoing distress releases three times the amount of cortisol and adrenaline in your body than other types of stress, like as if your car won't start. And 20% of that is going to go right to your brain. Now think about that. Well, your brain only makes up 2 to 3% of your body weight, and it's going to burn it. And Scott, what our HR reps and, the, and our viewers have to remember, too, is it's not just the activities that are going on in the workplace. We don't know what stressors or how these individuals oh, yeah. are being um, intimidated or treated at home in their personal lives. Right. And then to come into the oh. workplace and have it compounded, it just makes right. things even worse. So getting right. back to the super oversensitive individual, 
I mean, yeah. it, uh, you and I talked about a situation here a year ago where the individual was complaining. She called me and she said, Pandy, I just can't take it anymore. I am just so upset. I can't not work with this person anymore. And I said, well, please share with me. Yeah, Help me better understand. My God, I, he was he would make comments in the um, in his meetings. Well, listen, I, I need to hurry up because my, my wife gets really upset and, you know, I don't want to upset her. <laughs> or okay. a comment like, um, okay, let's let the women go first because you know how sensitive they are. So, guys, we're going to hold off. We're going to be courteous and let the women go first. And this employee okay. was off her chart because she felt it was all sexist comments. And he was, you know, talking down to women. And uh -huh. I, I really had to stop and and really think, okay, no, wait a minute. I got to be able to see it through her eyes because the employer is – they're off the tracks. They they don't they don't want any, anything to do with her. But as HR people, we really have to we have to understand. In fact, your book is very very clear. One one of the points I marked out in here is emotions are chemical and electrical. And oh yeah. Most of our actions are based on emotions. Yeah. Oh yes, our emotions will commandeer our body in seventeen thousandths of a second. That's how we're wired. And and emotions. And that's the thing is, is it, controlling your emotions means slowing down, not making decisions off the, you know, off the cuff and taking that five seconds to breathe. And I will tell you, um, the mental health in our country right now, and just give you an idea of how difficult this is for a lot of people to do, is that 80% of everybody who you know who has prescription drug coverage is on some sort, usually a combination, of psychiatric medication. And on average, depending on the study you look at, maybe 20% are on the right one. So all of this comes into the workplace, but you're absolutely right. Uh, so many stress. COVID pushed us over the edge. And the, the American Psychological Association has targeted um, um, workplaces because, I mean, approximately 75 to 80 percent of all Americans say they are being bullied at work yeah. or they're witnessing bullying at work. And so you spend so much time there. So it's it's a vicious cycle. But you got to break that cycle and develop safe environments where you don't have this type of bullying and HR has to address it. Go keep going with that a little bit, because, again, I think people are becoming oversensitive, again, as a defensive. You've got in here as well. And, I, you know, I've got I love I love the entire book, but I, I did want to highlight the difference between interpersonal distress and impersonal distress. I mean, you, yeah. you, there's there's a difference, as you, you know, you're going to explain here in a minute. But I, I think that maybe we're becoming oversensitive just as a defensive, don't you think? Oh, yeah. It's, well, first of all, it's talk. I mean, it, it is amazing. I'm hearing this. Well, you know, you know, these people, they, they, they don't, you know, they don't stand by. They're not going to be victims. And I'm like, well, okay, it's okay to speak up, but understand, uh, first rule, would most people be offended by this or is this my pet peeve? And if it's your pet peeve, then okay, it's you and that's okay. But it is amazing. The, 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 the days of sitting down, and working out differences, actual conflict resolution, where people are actually listening and parroting back to each other what each, each thought they heard, those days seem to be gone when people feel fully justified that if they get upset, that they attack you. Yeah, and you hit it on the head there. And look at what's happening in our society. People think stress is stress is stress. That is not even close to be true. We've known but that hasn't been true for over 20 years now. We've known this. The stress that you get, the distress, which is a flooding of cortisol and adrenaline in your body, is three times worse than having too much work to do, than, you know, uh, getting stuck in traffic or your, your car won't start. That's all stress. But I'll tell you if, you, if you want to fry your brain in a big hurry, work in an environment where you have to walk on eggshells because you've got attackers like Sheriff Campo or you've got hypersensitive people who will jump on you for accidentally using the wrong pronoun all over you. Oh, that, that is 40% worse than smoking. And, and I always love this because 
if somebody lit up a cigarette in your workplace, I mean, any of the workplaces of people listening, if somebody lit up a cigarette, someone would come over and say, hey, you, uh, you can't do that there. But if somebody, um, you know, is bullying somebody else or attacking them because maybe they made a mistake, that will kill you. 40% fast, it is harder on your heart, uh, and it will give you a mental disorder in a very short period of time. And just in case that doesn't motivate people out there to have a good, uh, safe work environment where it's okay to be di different, if that didn't motivate you, we now know that massive amounts of cortisol sprayed in your brain causes Alzheimer's. And Alzheimer's in the next 20 years is supposed to either triple or quadruple. Okay, that's scary so, enough. So, that, 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 oh, that's... it should scare the bejesus. Yeah. Okay, but this show's about solutions, and, and I know yeah. you have them. So let's let's rally back and, and circle back, and let's now give the HR or our viewers, yeah. let's give them solutions. What do we do with that oversensitive individual, and yeah. how, do we, how do we walk the entire team through this? Yeah. Yeah, first of all, you got to set the rules. And here's where the EEOC has really come through for you. Uh, now, you, you really do need to be doing your harassment and bullying training. And if you hadn't done that uh, recently, then you just shouldn't be in human resources. You should go sell shoes. You get out. Okay? Because it's not just fulfilling a legal requirement. If you look and see what the EEOC said back in 2016, you have to teach tolerance which means I'm not going to pick on you because you're different. And that is a rule. That that rule right there. I'm not going to attack you because you disagree with me. I'm not going to attack you because you're white, because you're black, because you're Jewish, because you're a Satanist. No, I'm going to believe what I want to believe. I can, I can sit there and think whatever I want to think, but I'm not going to bully you. And conflict resolution. All of those things should set the basic boundary, the base, the base of your entire culture. And then you're going to have people who are just going to ignore it and they're not going to make it safe. I'm going to pick on somebody because they disagreed with me. I'm going to pick on someone because they are transgender or God knows what. Well, then I'm going to coach them. I'm going to bring them in. I'm going to use my EPR skills, my empathic listening, parroting and reward. So listen to what they say. I'll repeat it back. Make sure we're on the same page. And this is what I said to a group of Amish women about five years ago who were bullying a coworker who had turned Satanist. Now, that's a fun situation, I'll tell you right now. you got these <laughs> fundamentalist Christians working with some young 19-year-old girl who just turned Satanist. And I listened to the women. I said, I, see, I give them a reward. I see where you're coming from, and you've got a right to believe that. I will support to the death your right to believe that. But you don't have a right to pick on her. You don't have a right to bully her. And you, if you do, I'll coach you again, and then I will fire you. And, uh, and we had a good discussion about religion and their beliefs. And I kept telling them, I'm not going to tell you to be accepting of this woman. I'm not going to tell you to change your beliefs. That's illegal. But I will control your behavior on and off the job. And it was really interesting. We get along just great. Last time I was up there, they gave me muffins. <laughs> and, um, and the young, yeah, the young Satanist quit and left. Now, the reason she quit and left is because now she's not getting a rile out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She was just doing it to make their life miserable. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, she, they were, she was setting them up for a great loss. <sighs> and and, and this, this young Satanist was recording everything that these women said to her. And I told him, I said, you're going to have to go home and you're going to have to explain to your husband that you are going to have to shell out a hundred to $150,000 in a lawsuit. And that's if you win. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, a little educating, a little coaching, but I was serious. Yeah. You pick on this Satanist, I will fire you. But and, and but the thing, if you were smoking, I would do that. Let's go back to the oversensitive individual though, who feels that she's the one who's being picked on. And, right. and feels that, you know, she's the victim. It, you know, we, right. To, to your point earlier, we can't look at them and say, look, you're being oversensitive. Just get over it. No, no. Same EPR process. You are so right. And so I just had one of those, uh, actually, just a couple weeks ago, 
um, and I'm listening to her. I said, well, tell me what's going on. That's that empathic listening. Mm -hmm. you got to listen to where they're coming from. So they'll tell you everything they're thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and again, how do I know if somebody's hypersensitive? Well, would most people be upset if that was on the front page of USA Today? And I think that's just your common sense uh, indicator. And, and if you don't know what that is, well, just share that with a jury of 12 peers. They will tell you what is reasonable and what isn't reasonable <laughs> in a big hurry. Okay? We don't want to be there. So, we, we no, don't, you don't, we don't want, want to be there. Be there. <laughs> no. But I listened to her, and I said, okay, let me pair it back. I want to make sure that's respectful. I'm sure I got this. And I said, I see what you're saying. And then we had a discussion as to would most people be upset? She goes, well, I don't know. But this really upsets me. I said, yeah. I said, and I'd ask, I'll ask things like, you know, this is a real pattern here, isn't it? I mean, you've had these problems for a while. And I talk about the problems. And, and I'll tell you as, you, as you build rapport with people, they share with you what they're going through. There's the key. Everything. Oh, there's OCD. the key. It's, well, and yeah. trust and trust. That's, you know, that's our oh. job as HR is we have to earn their trust. Right. And that's that's right. a key word there. You have to earn it, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, this is. She knows I'm not going to attack her disagreeing with me it's okay to disagree with me yeah. and i will tell you point blank i send a lot you gotta think of these as not a trip to the woodshed you gotta think of this like an intervention yeah and i will tell you i send a lot of people for to be psychologically oh effective. well <laughs> perfectly legal perfect I, well that's another whole show scott that's that's well, another <laughs> i just want to say you, you can't send somebody to be treat to be to treat <laughs> But I know weird when I see it, and and I'll tell you the success that I've had in helping people deal with these types of things. Because New York Times reported 20 years ago that hypersensitivity all the time is a mental disorder. And that's where we so have to end the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it just goes on and on, doesn't it? I love yeah. having him on the show. Oh, and thank hey, you. listen, guys, if you if viewers, it doesn't matter whether you're an HR representative or whether you're just an employee. If you would like to participate in one of Scott's uh, anti-harassment or bullying classes, please feel free to go to his website. He has all of his educational programs posted on there, as well as more information about uh, the multiple books that he has written and what that I will promote till the end of days. Uh, mm -hmm. Scott, you want to give their website? Yeah, it's scottwarrick.com. That's S-O-T-T-W-A-R-R-I-C-K. So if you just Google Scott Warwick, it'll pop right up. And yeah, there's all kinds of free resources out there, trainings, and we, we do a, a free uh, Zoominar, free webinar every month to talk about these types of issues. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and you, you'll learn his sense of humor is just as, as, as present in those classes as he is here on this show. Scott, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Love it. And viewers, we're glad you showed up, too. If you have any questions or concerns, give us a call. That's what we're here for at cool. The Human Resource.